Hey, how's it going guys? It's Nate here. And we've discussed Skyrim Civil War on this channel at length before, particularly regarding the fact that it was left largely unfinished by Bethesda. Indeed, the Elder Scrolls V's developers originally had planned for the struggle between the Stormcloaks and the Imperials to be a much larger and more grand affair, with more battles, quests, characters, and even some mechanics that unfortunately never made it into the final game, likely due to time limitations on Bethesda's end. The result being that the civil war we get to experience in Skyrim is only a shadow of what it could have been, reduced to a handful of fort skirmishes and a couple of sieges. Thankfully, over the last seven years, the modding community has done what the modding community does, and produced a plethora of modules and files centered around the Civil War with the aim of enhancing the experience and restoring it to the glory it was meant to have. So, in today's video, we'll be exploring a few of the best mods available that give Skyrim's defining conflict the love it oh so deserves. Starting off, before we get into the big ones, I'd like to begin this video with a mod that addresses the lack of diversity within both the Imperial and Stormcloak armies. Diverse Skyrim, simply put, enhances the spawn pools for both Civil War factions to increase the variety of characters that we see in their forces. Around 100 new NPCs with different appearances, classes, and stats have been integrated to appear within the armies, ensuring the player will be exposed to far more fresh faces and a greater assortment of combat styles used by your enemies. But what's more, in doing this and expanding the spawn pool, Diverse Skyrim also adds Dark Elves, Orcs, and female soldiers into the ranks of the Imperial Legion. We know from a number of in-game books, as well as general dialogue and our own experiences in the game, that the Imperial Army is made up of far more than just the Nordic and Imperial units that we see, and Diverse Skyrim seeks to ensure that such a reality is now reflected. The mod makes a point of ensuring that the new races aren't being overrepresented within the Legion. We are still in Skyrim after all. So you will not see nearly as many orcish soldiers as you do Nord or humanoid ones. Instead, for every 10 Imperial troops you see, expect around 8 of them to be normal humans, one to be an elf, another to be an orc, and maybe out of all 10 of them, 3 to be female. The Stormcloaks, for obvious reasons, will remain an entirely Nordic faction, though their spawn pool has still been greatly diversified. This mod doesn't just stop with the Civil War players either. It also overhauls bandits, vampires, necromancers, hold guards, and a few more factions. But its changes to the two sides of the Civil War are the most pronounced, and also relevant for what we're going for today. Diverse Skyrim is easily among my favorite mods out there, and it's definitely going to make your Civil War experience all that more immersive. Next on our list, getting into the questline itself, we have Open Civil War. This mod is one that we've mentioned before, and for good reason. It's arguably the largest in this video. Open Civil War seeks to change the rather straightforward and linear Civil War quest line into something of a dynamic strategy game, where the player is given the chance to lead their own faction. Following the Battle of Whiterun, regardless of which side you've taken, the Dragonborn will have the ability to start deciding on where battles are fought and which holds should be taken next in their campaign. Furthermore, OCW also unlocks some of the game's cut content and restores the massive battles that were meant to occur at every hold capital. No longer will you be able to just overpower five Stormcloaks at a random castle and somehow have conquered the entire rift. No, now you'll have to storm Riften's gates directly in a major siege and force the Jarl to surrender before you. Some of these sieges were very well fleshed out, with pre-battle speeches delivered by commanders, and scripted end scenes where we could watch as a Jarl abdicates and bickers with their replacement. These battles alone earn Open Civil War my recommendation, but it doesn't stop there. In addition to all of this, the mod also transforms the various Civil War maps of Skyrim into an interactive turn-based strategy game, where you can move around troops and send them to different holds and forts. This is important, as the battles you do fight on the ground can now be lost if the enemy kills more men than you have stationed in that area. Through this campaign map, the AI will also launch their own attacks and counterattacks, often forcing you into defensive battles where you have to protect your territory, lest it be conquered. Playing defense wasn't even a thing offered in the vanilla quests. The map can get to be rather complicated, and if you want, one can get away with just ignoring it altogether. 
though you'll be forfeiting some significant battle advantages. There's much more to the mod than what I've just described. It's shockingly in-depth, and turns the questline itself into a far more interesting and challenging affair. Suffice it to say, Open Civil War more than earns its spot on this list. Coming in at number 3, the camps belonging to both sides of the Civil War spread across Skyrim have become quite the nuisance to many players. As since their commanders and legates are always flagged as essential, they can never actually be cleared out. Even after the war has ended and Tullius or Ulfric has explicitly told you that they expect the Dragonborn to destroy any hostile camps you come across, they'll still be full of essential characters. So despite winning the war, you still won't be able to rid Skyrim of your enemy faction's presence. Well, Civil War Aftermath provides an immersive solution to this dilemma. It not only removes the essential status of camp and fort commanders in the quest line, thereby allowing you to truly clear out these locations, but also allows you to burn camps down once you've killed all nearby enemies. Burning down and destroying rival camps is actually fairly easy. Simply kill all of the enemies on sight and light the tents on fire with either a flame spell or a torch. Once all of the tents have been burned, that camp will be flagged as destroyed. NPCs will no longer spawn there, and you'll be eligible to receive a letter from either General Tolius or Ulfric, giving you some gold and thanking you for taking care of that location. And on top of all of that, destroyed camps will later be turned into symbols of power for the opposite faction. It's not uncommon to return to a camp you wiped out a week ago to find a number of executed enemy soldiers. Frankly, this mod would have been great if all it did was eliminate the essentialness of camp commanders, but by going that extra mile and creating an entire new system to deal with enemy encampments, Civil War Overhaul has earned a permanent seat in my load order. For fourth spot, we move into environmental changes. While Skyrim might be plagued with its rockiest conflict in centuries, one wouldn't really be able to tell that by just walking around on the roads and traveling the region. Aside from the occasional patrol once in a blue moon, there's not a whole lot you'll see in Skyrim's wilds to suggest a literal war is going on. Well, Warzone's Civil Unrest seeks to remedy that problem. The mod adds a number of clashes that can randomly occur throughout Skyrim, as well as introduces some new patrols and unit types for both Civil War factions. It'll now be possible to stumble upon anything, from small skirmishes between Imperial and Stormcloak scouts, to massive, full-scale battles with dozens of NPCs on each side, complete with mages, captains, light troops, heavy troops, and sometimes even some furry friends. The mod responds to your current progress in the Civil War, and adjusts where and what kind of battles and patrols you'll find accordingly. But it's not just the Civil War factions that are duking it out. Battles can also involve the Forsworn, Bandits, the Dawnguard, Vampires, and more. Overall, Warzones makes the lands of Skyrim feel more chaotic, and helps to remind players what a major conflict the region is in the middle of. The mod developed a bit of a bad rep in the early days of Legacy Edition for not being the most stable of creations, but thankfully, it's improved radically since then, and I would definitely recommend giving it a go. Alternatively, there's also Immersive Patrols. Immersive Patrols introduces new patrols for both sides of the Civil War that'll populate the country's roads and trails. As mentioned, Warzones does this too, but IP doesn't prioritize huge engagements with tons of actors. The mod does come with a few preset battles that can occur at a couple of forts, but they're not quite as hectic as what you would find in WCU. And again, they're not random. Because it doesn't rely on any scripts, Immersive Patrols is a lot more stable. And if you're still skeptical about Warzone's performance, or just don't want something quite as in-your-face, this mod is an excellent substitute. Likewise, if you're really dedicated, you can also pair the two, as they don't override each other. So you can have the big battles of Warzone's and its patrols, combined with the patrols of this mod and its smaller scale clashes, to produce a truly tumultuous Skyrim. Whichever way you decide to go, I would definitely advise you pick up one of these modules, as they're sure to remind you what a chaotic place Skyrim has become. And finally, last on our list, we're bundling another two mods, Man Those Borders and Civil War Checkpoints. Combined, these two create a number of new outposts, checkpoints, and border crossings across Skyrim that help to better reflect the militarized and tense environment the region should be in, 
without going too overboard. Man Those Borders focuses on placing fortifications and gates near strategic places on the borders of various holds, whereas Civil War Checkpoints instead focuses on decorating the interior of provinces. All of the locations for both mods will respond with the progress of the war, so in an Imperial hold that's fallen to the Stormcloaks, you'll see Ulfric's men replace Imperial soldiers at these fortifications. They also pair remarkably well with the Merced patrols and or war zones, as it won't be uncommon to see units pass through these fortifications, and oftentimes battles will break out nearby, and the soldiers will leave their posts to join in the fighting. At some of these locations, you'll find the soldiers there performing the duties of customs agents, logging the names of travelers and citizens passing through. Other areas operate more as garrison forts, where soldiers are simply staying awaiting their orders. Paired, the mods really do bring to attention just what a significant event the Civil War is. Anyway, that does it for today. A collection of mods to transform Skyrim Civil War into something that more closely resembles what Bethesda originally had in mind. Before I let you guys go, I wanted to give a huge thank you for 400,000 subscribers. We hit that milestone just a couple of days ago, and I am absolutely stoked. I had originally intended for a bit of a thank you video to come out a little bit sooner. However, as you might be able to tell, I'm a little sick at the moment. So any sort of thank you video will probably be delayed for a couple more days, and it'll have to be a 403,000 subscriber special, or 405,000 subscriber special, rather than 400. But, oh well, we'll make do. Anyway, thanks for stopping by everybody. Which of the mods shown off in this video do you have experience with, and what are your thoughts on it? And what mods do you think should have been featured here today that I left out? Leave a comment down below. As always, like ratings are very much appreciated. Again, thanks for watching, and I hope to catch you all in my next video. Peace out, everyone.